channel here over at subscribe star thanks to all the new members over there that's one new member well you good enough so star wars is begging for views there's actually quite a few articles on the accolade i guess it's not doing too well this is a uh, headland weinstein's assistant so um disney is uh she's begging for views here but there's a bunch of articles she's because she's because she's they do this where they try to do interviews to try to get some support for the thing which just concluded so i don't know i guess you can watch it in uh in reruns or whatever it is the kids call it today with their their pac-man so disney is uh is uh she's begging for views and it's failing because it presents i was thinking like you know it so biden or kamala or trump it's like ah does it make a difference uh not not really not in the long term then I, I i failed to care so disney fails because it presents a world that nobody cares about that that i mean you could kind of that's the pre the summary and the conclusion you just put a, put a period on it people don't care about anything within the star wars universe because the characters are not worth it they can't identify with the characters and left wing always claims to value that con we they need to see themselves in the characters yeah so does the bulk of the audience see themselves in the characters? No, 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 no. We got rid of the old audience. Okay, but did you replace it? Not, not, not yet. Uh, okay, I mean, you know, you need to make money on these shows, right? This is a, I, this is going to be a one season show. People, uh, oh, if you're an SCW, you probably want to tune out now. Don't value diversity. No offense. And if, you know, if you're offended, it's because the media has turned you into a pussy. I'm doing a, a video on the alt, uh, other platforms for the power of brainwashing. It is, we, it is way more powerful than people suspect. And nobody wants to admit that they've been, that they're in this brainwash matrix. Because it, it's not, because it takes away some of your agency. But it, when you look at, like, how, how many of your, your views were shaped from the media and not from books or real world experiences, it's a, it's a surprising amount. Anyway, so there's a fundamental disconnect between the Disney narrative and the audience expect. Let me just let me just put it this way: you got characters. You're picking actors to play characters. Okay, everyone 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 knows um, they know the, the like the commercial appeal of different market sectors of different actors to play different market sectors. So, would you be better off if you just got a bunch of blonde hair, blue eyed people out of like a, a Scandinavian? beer commercial back in the 80s yeah yeah of course that's the biggest market share so why don't you do that and then this is where they insert some you know frankfurt school bolshevik uh, propaganda so there's a fundamental disconnect between the audience uh, narr expectations and what disney is is putting in their narrative and disney would rather go out of business than give up their religion of woke and on a related note <laughs> larry fink de facto leader of Disney. It's not actually Iger or what's-his-face. He's talking to Trump about being the Janet Yellen replacement. So, what happened to Drain the Swamp, Trump? Uh, that was that was like seven years ago. Move on. Ah, this is enacting a permanent wetlands. So, Disney is pushing a globalist, divers, gay story world. The audience... <laughs> Audience doesn't value those things. It feels like that shouldn't be politically incorrect to say uh, diversity, feminism, whatever the left is pushing. Yeah, yeah, Jedi has no need of, of those kind of things. Uh, Kevin, give Kevin Smith Star Wars. We don't value those kind of things. And it would just be better if more people were, were like me. I mean, maybe a skinnier version of me. If people were uh, 255 on the scales the other day... It's, it's, not looking good if more people were honest about this if you just if you talk about it with people you got to say it straight faced it's amazing what you can say if you just say it you have to say things as if you're unaware that it's not politically correct like ah diversity ah that's just so cringe especially after all the rioting the blm the antifa all that just throw in soros or something it's like it doesn't have to all make sense the thing is i don't have to justify my my bigoted and istophobic views it's the audience perception that's the only thing that matters and the perception of all this stuff is woke and they go define it define it and you look at i mean i i have many times but you look at disney you go whatever disney's putting out there or whatever hollywood in general it's not finding an audience. So you probably want to go in a different direction. Like I said, the blonde hair, blue eyed, can we get those people as the good guys? And the, and the non blonde hair, blue eyed people as the bad guys? 
and they look at you like you've lost your freaking mind, like you, you're you're marching around to uh, to Erica in, in Hugo Boss type of stuff because their whole world is a straw man universe. Um, feminism, yeah, that's totally lame. I, you know, hey, war's breaking out. They're gonna draft those 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 uh those blue haired weirdo chicks. And suddenly they're in the kitchen making sandwiches. It's a lot of fun if you can just say this stuff just outright because on social media the Twitter kids will immediately melt down in some emotional mess because it's all just personal preferences. So all they can say is to personally attack you because how do you attack the message of, yeah, I want the whitest white people you can possibly imagine in these shows. And that's when they start huffing and puffing, but it's like there's no way to counter argument to that. The black guy goes, I, I want to see more blacks in this character role and Asian says the same. It's it's all, I mean, it's like there's no counter argument to it other than to personally attack the person giving the message. Um, they can they can attack you all they want, all, the, all they want, but they're not able to sell tickets to the big screen and they're not able to get you to sign up for Disney. There's nothing uh, and no streaming service that is, is worth paying for. And, and there's nothing coming out of Hollywood now in fact, there hasn't been anything coming out of Hollywood that's that's worth going to a theater for. And I feel with confidence I can say there's nothing gonna there's not gonna be anything in the future. So um, you know, you got to go back to like black and white days to watch movies that are kind of free of all this kind of cancer. But the um, the creators and the executive and they th- seem to confuse fighting with people on social media and selling tickets. And the, and the problem with a lot of this thing is is um you know i gotta be care- kind of careful is this stuff doesn't arise in a vacuum we're in the middle of a very serious culture war that eh, might lead to a, a you know hotter form of that never know um and and you know how these people these directors and actors and producers think because they're on twitter showing their ass every day where they're advocating to delete a president because they don't like uh well they don't like him i was gonna say they don't like any of his policies but i I don't even think it boils down to that it's just they just don't like him or they think they can joke about joke about um uh malum and say crimes um the thing is uh the thing is we see their behavior and then we see them acting on screen and and you go you know what i've just the willing suspension of disbelief just doesn't go this this far and the thing is, the creators and the executives at Disney, these very wealthy people, they don't value all those, you know, feminism, diversity, whatever type of, you know, cancerous stuff. The wealthy people at the top of Disney don't actually live with that wonderful enrich- enrichment that they're pushing on us. Or rather, they live in the ultra-wealthy version of it, you know, in a gated community with, you know, uh, people look re- remarkably similar to them in the average uh, you know, house is ten million dollars or something, and, and that's just not our experience. So they're they go, oh, we love diversity. We have a Chinese neighbor, and he's you know he's a I don't know plastic surgeon or, or something. Th- that kind of nonsense, you know. It's like everyone has Porsches kind of thing. To them, it means they're a millionaire neighbor who has a tan. That's that's about as far as the diversity goes, and they claim to value it. The audience isn't invested in Disney in general, or this Star Wars show. I don't even remember what it's called anymore. Acolyte? Or, um, anyway, the, um, the uh, protagonists, if they win or they lose, the characters don't gain anything that the audience values. If the protagonists lose, it doesn't matter because what's the difference between either side? The globalist storyline is the anti-human equation. It's the left-hand path. It's one diverse group of people versus another. Why do we care? I hope they both delete each other and the story can just end. But in the liberals' mind, one diverse group of communists, because they're the good guys, because they say that they're the good guys. You know what I'm saying? It's like the word is not the thing. The, um, the word is not the thing. Uh, do what I'm. If, it, they're trying to say something and label things, but then you. It's like what they call Antifa. They go, they're anti-fascist, and and Andy Nago is against. He's anti-anti Antifa, so that makes him fascist. They go, it's just a straw man on top of a straw man. You can say that these are the good guys, but they have to do heroic acts and they have to do things that the audience values, and they just don't do anything. You can call them whatever you want, and. They um they call the bad guys the fascists. That's like that's been the last I don't know ever since Trump I guess almost ten years. Who are also diverse and fascism is bad because they're globalist terrorist teachers and media brainwash them their whole life to think so. 
even if they can't define any of the terms or discuss it without emotional outbursts and ad homs. Now, here's the thing. The, the, the cultural vacuum is probably the, the critical part because if they did this stuff like 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, it would have been, it would have been okay. It would have done a lot better. But they're doing it now, and this is just there's just so much of it that as soon as you see a, a pox, a POC, you're out. You have no. I have. I look at this. I'm like, I have. I could say a lot of things that I can't say. On. I have no interest in it, and you don't have any interest in it either. And the audience reflects that. It's like, oh hey, look, there's a, a, a black character, Asian character, Indian character. It's just a Larry Frank checklist. So the um. The audience is expected to be invested in labels that are not really attached to things or concepts. One side is a black communist lesbians, and Disney expects you to cheer them on. I hope the stormtroopers wipe them out and fertilize the fields. I don't know if I can see that on YouTube. But I did tell the SDWs to tune out. Black lesbian Satan-worshipping witches are not my value. It's gay and cringe. And the effed up, effed up thing is I can't even cheer for the antagonist. Because Disney also makes them diverse. That was in um, Acolyte or Andor. No, Andor, the one, the one before this was a, a better example of this. And this is kind of a weird situation where the left starts to run into contradictions. And the thing is, okay, you've got uh, this chick, uh, black, lesbian, Satan-worshipping witches. So just think of all these Venn diagrams where you start excluding part of your audience. And a black male doesn't lose too much of the audience depending on where you are in the culture war. A uh, female is a female protagonist is losing a huge chunk of the audience. Now, you coupled with this, um, with that she's a pox, you've lost, a, you've lost a fair amount more. And then you cu couple that in with that she's a witch, and you lose a ton of people. And there's just all these Venn diagrams, and it adds up to, can we see the numbers for the show? It's like, now we don't need to, sh to show you that. You can't, it's like you can't check every list, every every box in the. Um, I mean, you should have made her disabled, you know, in, a, in a, like a space wheelchair or something just equally stupid. These, these are not my values, and they're not your values as well. And there's you know there's a lot of Christianity in America, but even if it's not exactly, people are not exactly Christian. There's a lot of it's Christianity. It's just kind of represents the right hand path for a lot of people, whether they're into other religions or paganisms there's there's very clearly a binary between uh sinister and, and dexterous for for kind of like philosophy and, and religions in general the um the thing is uh they they get into this kind of horseshoe thing where they can't they make the ant they want to make the antagonists you know blonde haired blue eyed uh, but it would just be too obvious even for the super coomer they want to make them like uh the blonde haired blue eyed men who show up on the uh the UK military uh military promotions like what happened to all the diversity oh we're actually going to war now so we, we're going to need the blonde haired guys to to fight these foreign wars how about no um anyway so the uh even the super coomer consumer normie would would start to notice uh where every bad guy is some you know nordic out of central casting and we'd all be taking their side because they would definitely be the cooler side and the thing is when you're not when you're in deep in this culture war people are going to align with the protagonist antagonist it doesn't matter if you call one guy the good guys or the bad guys they're just going to align with the characters that they identify with, if you know what I'm saying. And with, that's kind of another problem that the left has with um, making fascist characters. I mean, everything the left does is this painful straw man, because fascist characters look awesome, awesome to normal people. There's a scene in Andor Star Wars where this platinum blonde in her, her Hugo Boss equivalent suit, I mean, that's that's what they're, they're representing, is looking down from a platform... And she looked cool as hell. And the thing is, one of her sidekicks was a black guy, and the other guy was, I don't know, some. but they were representing the English Empire. And they looked friggin' awesome. And they had the same issue with uh, Starship Troopers, because the left wing sees themselves as ugly, creepy things found under rocks. And in their mind, the fasci soldiers are handsome, fit, competent people in sharp outfits. No, no, Nazi, you don't understand media literacy. They were making fun of you, you chads. Except how 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 was Starship Troopers making fun of 
the uh, the left wing identifies with the bugs or with the lesbian muff diving man hating space witches who don't need no man the audience is on the side of whoever wipes them off the planet anyway so disney kind of ends up stepping on its tail because they make the good and bad guys diverse but nobody cares their whole worldview is communism is good and and fascism is bad but when you look at their presentation, either you just don't care at all, you're not invested, or you take the side of the stormtroopers just because they look cool. Because none of this stuff exists in a vacuum. We see the disingenic freaks online. Physogamy is real. That's why I gotta drop a couple of pounds. Uh, who hold the same values as these pussy-licking space witches. They're ugly, broken people who couldn't run a gumball machine. These are the people who have painted themselves into a woke corner where they... They put boys in dresses and give them hormones and then mutilate and sterilize them or else they're not woke enough and the mob will cancel them. People don't value the BLT GV stories because they affirm death, decay, subversion, corruption, the sinister left-hand path of Satan. Life is the right-hand path of families and nationalism, a tribe of one people, the hero rescuing the girl and starting a family so their sons can go off on their own adventures. That's classic organic storytelling that has been around for... Who's that guy? The Hero's, Hero's Journey? I want to say Kurosaki. Uh, I've got that book, actually. Um, I'm going to have to crack it open. It's a really big book. We're not feminists. Most people are not. Many of the elements used in these globalist stories are the found family Bolshevik concept. It's a story that pushes the concept of people abandoning their blood family to bring different groups of people together for some mission. And I have seen this in comic books over the past 10 years when I kind of got back into comics, it's shown really, really well. And I used to do those comics online, I mean, on the, on this channel and talk about them. And, uh, you know, actually Mark Wade has a, a new comic out, but it's so over the top where literally like in the first two pages, there's some blue-eyed guy who's robbing a bank or something just bizarrely asinine that. I think it's called Absolute Power or something. Anyway, some, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll wait for the second issue to come out. Some elements work and some don't. In Lord of the Rings, the concept worked. You had different kingdoms come together, including a kingdom of the dead in, in Return of the King. And they all had a similar interest in fighting the greater threat. But then after they won, they separated and they went their separate ways from the wild men who were in the books and I guess were edited out of the movies to hobbits and elves. Part of the globalist elements come up in The Hobbit. He probably, I don't know if you saw The Hobbit, it was not very good. Where, I mean, that was, I don't know what year The Hobbit came out, but that was a, that was a pretty good example of the wokeism. It's like it suddenly turned a corner. They just flipped a switch because there are elements in The Hobbit where there's, um, well, they had an interspecies relationship with a dwarf and an elf. And then they had a, a, a non, a character, a non-white character in the village that's supposed to remind you of some little, you know, European village or something, you know, in 1100 AD. And they had a little bit of diversity in there. And I remember watching them like, the fuck is she doing on the set? Like, did, how did she sneak in? And you realize this is just, this is just Hollywood now. This is, this is the Hobbit. And this is probably, that, that's probably why, um, the guy didn't want to direct it. Uh, but he, uh, he kind of had to after the original guy dropped out, he had a family issue. So he had to step in and, and try to try to fix it but in the in the first lord of the rings you go we're going to try to honor the vision of uh tolkien and just stick to it as closely as possible and then when they made the hobbit it's like clearly that was a different contract because they go we're gonna we're gonna add in some things so you're gonna put diversity in, in the hobbit and have a uh, a dwarf and an elf and the thing is, that ruins the canon of the story, because unless I was... I mean, one, if it's not in The Hobbit, leave it out, but was it in the extended universe of, of Tolkien at all, with the Silmarillion and all the other kind of stuff? I don't I don't know, but it's like, why don't you just follow The Hobbit? It kind of reads like a script. It's All you have to do is just put it to put it to film like you did with the first film. It's like, well, it wasn't diverse enough. Then why don't you get it, grab another story... That's amazing and also diverse. Like, oh well, those stories don't exist. Okay, well that tells you something right, right there. Why don't you write one? Why don't you create one? Because you know it takes fifty years to catch on. So they're trying to, trying to. I mean, this is all astroturf, and it's like why their stuff effing fails. The Hobbit still made money because it was, you know, overall it was still pretty solid. 
but then they have rings of power and it's like how's rings of power doing um not well at all at all how's uh, how's all these star wars uh things doing again not 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 well anyway um like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys on next episode